Okay, so the next topic is um, generalized inverses of matrices. So we know that if a matrix is square and non-singular, we can always invert it. But um, in order to solve systems of linear equations and even for many other problems, um, we will need to invert matrices that are rectangular of size M by N. So for that, we use this concept of generalized inverses and uh, these generalized inverses have various properties that we can also study. So we'll start with the basic definition. The generalized inverse of a matrix A of size M by N is the unique matrix B of size N by M. So note that the dimensions are reversed. It's of size N by M satisfying four properties. The first property is that AB is a Hermitian symmetric matrix. That is AB equals AB Hermitian, which of course is B Hermitian A Hermitian. Similarly, BA is a Hermitian matrix. That is BA is equal to BA Hermitian, which is equal to A Hermitian B Hermitian. Then A times B times A equals A. B times A times B equals B. So the matrix B that satisfies these four properties is a unique matrix and is called the generalized inverse or the Moore Penrose pseudo inverse of this matrix A. And we often denote it by A dagger. Okay, so the fact that this is a unique matrix that satisfies all these four properties is the essence of this proposition. So let A be a matrix of size M by N. Then there exists a unique matrix B which satisfies one to four. So <clears throat> what it says, it's in fact saying two things. One is that it's always possible to satisfy these properties one to four. And there's only one matrix that satisfies all four of these properties. Okay, very interesting proposition. So in other words, you can find a pseudo inverse for any matrix A, no exceptions. And that pseudo inverse that you find, there's no other one, it's, the, it's a unique one. Okay, so here is how the proof goes. So again, we start with the singular value decomposition of the matrix A, U sigma V Hermitian. So first we'll talk about existence. That is to show that there exists a matrix B which satisfies these four properties. Sir. Yes. Excuse me. Go ahead. Sir, uh, does it mean that uh, any uh, like for square matrices of non-full non rank, there exists this pseudo inverse. Can you repeat your question? If A is a square matrix of uh, rank uh, lesser than full rank, I mean not full rank, yeah. does pseudo inverse exist for that also? Always. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So you can find a pseudo inverse of any matrix, square, rectangular, anything. It always exists and it's unique. You can't find two of them. Okay. It's a very intriguing property. Okay. So Sir, one more question. Yeah. Does this order inverse equal to inverse? Yes. So we'll see that actually. That when if you if you, if the matrix A is square and invertible the pseudo inverse equals the inverse. In fact, we can see something about that right away. Suppose A was a square matrix and uh, it was invertible. And if B was equal to A inverse, then if I take AB, AB is the identity matrix. Yes, of course it is Hermitian. Similarly, BA is the identity matrix. Of course it is Hermitian. If I do ABA, that B, A cancel with each other and I'll be left with A. If I do B, A, B, A, B cancel with each other, I'll be left with B. So the normal inverse also satisfies all these four properties when A is square and invertible. That is the reason why it's called a generalized inverse. Okay, it's not telling you something new when you go to square matrices that are invertible. It's the same inverse that you will get if you were to invert the matrix.
So this sigma here has an R cross R diagonal block D in the top left where R is equal to the rank of A. So that is our standard SVD. Let sigma 1 be an N by M matrix, okay, with D inverse in the top left R cross R blocks and everywhere zeros everywhere else, okay. So this is of size M by N. Okay, and sigma 1 is of size n by m, so the opposite size. What we'll first show is that sigma 1 is the Moore Penrose pseudo inverse of sigma. So if I take sigma, sigma 1, okay, that is equal to sigma 1. So this you just have to write it out what it looks like. So this will be like a D with. 0, 0, 0 here, and then this sigma 1 will be D inverse. These zeros are all of different dimensions. This is of size n by m, this is of size m by n. And so I'll get the identity and zeros, zeros, and that is exactly equal to sigma 1 Hermitian times sigma Hermitian, which is to say that the Hermitian of this matrix is equal to itself. Okay, so sigma sigma one is Hermitian, so it satisfies property one. Sigma one sig sigma is equal to sigma Hermitian, sigma one Hermitian. So this also satisfies that this matrix is a Hermitian symmetric matrix. Sigma times sigma one times sigma equals sigma. So I'll just write this like this. This, this is actually a bad way to write it because this sigma, this is sigma 1, this is sigma 1 Hermitian, and this is sigma Hermitian. So they're all of different dimensions. But uh, you have so basically the zeros are all of different dimensions. But by just matching up the dimensions, you can verify that this is actually true. And similarly, sigma, sigma 1 times sigma is equal to sigma. And sigma 1, sigma times sigma 1 equals sigma 1. So basically, sigma 1 is the Moore Penrose. Okay, for now, since I haven't said shown uniqueness, I can say that it is N Moore Penrose inverse. Of sigma. Sir, is he the Penrose who got the Nobel Prize? Okay, so coming back to coming back to our proof, um, suppose B uh, now. Okay, so let let's define B to be V times sigma one times U Hermitian. Okay, so what is B? If I have the SVD of A. I'll write it here. A is equal to U sigma V Hermitian. All I have done is to take the non-zero R cross R block in sigma, invert that and put that as a matrix sigma 1 of size N by M, pre-multiplied by V and post-multiplied by U Hermitian. Okay, interesting matrix. It's easy to obtain once you have the singular value decomposition of A. Then we can easily check that B satisfies properties 1 through 4. That is, for example, if you look at AB, that is U sigma V Hermitian V times sigma 1 times U Hermitian, just substituting for A and B. But V Hermitian V is the identity matrix, so it's sigma sigma 1 U Hermitian. And sigma sigma 1, sigma sigma 1 is equal to sigma 1 Hermitian sigma Hermitian. So it's sigma 1 Hermitian sigma Hermitian times U Hermitian. And now I can reinsert a V Hermitian V in between these two matrices and write it as U sigma 1 Hermitian V Hermitian V sigma 1 Hermitian U Hermitian. 
and this itself is basically b hermitian if b is this then b hermitian is u sigma 1 hermitian times b hermitian so that is b hermitian and this quantity here is just a hermitian a is u sigma v hermitian so a hermitian would be v sigma hermitian u hermitian so this is equal to b hermitian a hermitian okay which is the same as ab whole hermitian so ab is a hermitian symmetric matrix in a similar way you can verify properties 2 3 and 4 and so this matrix b that we defined here it satisfies the four properties required by the moore penrose pseudo inverse okay so we we now uh, we now have, we now know that there exists a moore penrose pseudo inverse now the uniqueness is a little more more complex so suppose there are two different matrices b1 and b2 that satisfy all four properties okay 1 to 4 then if i look at b1 hermitian minus b2 hermitian that is the same as b1 equals b1 a b1 so so we so for example we know that um, so if i take the hermitian okay so b1 hermitian is same as b1 a b1 hermitian so b1 uh, sorry b1 hermitian is b1 a hermitian b1 hermitian so b1 hermitian a b1 hermitian minus b2 hermitian a b2 hermitian so that is the difference between b1 hermitian and b2 hermitian but by property 1 ab is equal to b hermitian a hermitian okay so i have b1 hermitian a a hermitian which is equal to a b1 so a b1 b1 hermitian minus a b2 similarly for this a b2 b2 hermitian okay so this difference is equal to a b1 b1 hermitian minus a b2 b2 hermitian so you can see that this is equal to a times b1 b1 hermitian minus b2 b2 hermitian so the range space of b1 minus b1 hermitian minus b2 hermitian is a subset of the range space of a because you can write it as a times the matrix so it will have to uh, these columns will have to lie in the column space of a similarly um, using these properties 1 and 3 if you look at a a hermitian times b1 hermitian minus b2 hermitian you can write this as a b1 a minus a b2 a but a b1 a equals a and a b2 a equals a and so that is a minus a which is the zero matrix and so what that means is the range space of b1 minus b2 any vector belonging to the, to the column space of this matrix will lie in the null space of a a hermitian so this span of b1 hermitian minus b2 hermitian lies in the range space of a it also lies in the null space of a a hermitian now if a vector lies in the null space of a a hermitian that means a a hermitian v equals 0 which then means that just pre multiplying by b1 b1 times a a hermitian v equals 0 now you should verify this that again i'm just repeatedly using these properties it means that um i mean this the, these properties mean that if i look at b1 a a hermitian this matrix here that is the same as a b1 hermitian times a hermitian which is equal to a hermitian okay so a a hermitian times v equals 0 then implies that a hermitian v equals 0 so
So that means that the null space of A A Hermitian is equal to the null space of A Hermitian itself. Almost done. Um, so the upshot of that is that the range, so these two are the same and the range space of B1 Hermitian minus B2 Hermitian is a subspace, subset of both the range space of A and the null space of A Hermitian. Now, if you recall that this is actually the null set, then you're done. So basically, that's what the rest of the proof does, is that if there is a Z which lies in the range space of A, then Z can be written as a linear combination of the columns of A for some W. And similarly, if Z also belongs to the null space of A Hermitian, then A Hermitian Z equals zero. And substituting for Z, I have A Hermitian A times W equals zero, which means that W Hermitian times A Hermitian A W equals zero, which means that A W equals zero. So, but Z equals A W, so Z must be equal to zero. So this, this intersection space contains only the zero vector. So the range space of B1 Hermitian minus B2 Hermitian is zero, which in turn means that B1 Hermitian equals B2 Hermitian or B1 equals B2. So that concludes the proof. Okay. So that's all I have for today. Um, the next class, which is the last class of the course, we will uh, briefly discuss least squares problems. So the uh, what we are working up towards is to uh, figure out how to solve AX equals B. Uh, and in particular, in the case where there may not be an, an exact solution. So those are called least squares problems. In other words, we will ask what is the, how do we find, um, find a solution to the problem minimize with respect to x, ax minus p L to norm. And so all these pseudo inverses basically will show up there and help us solve this problem. So that's it for today and we'll meet again on Friday.